Hi there, language learning aficionados. This is Keith Swain at Five Arrows again. Uh, I've been talking in my previous videos about the difference between uh, proficiency and achievement or proficiency and fluency. Today I want to talk about different levels of proficiency and what those look like. When you think of yourself speaking another language, you'll find some of these descriptions uh, are, are helpful to peg the, the level at which you are able to perform certain tasks in a language. When people are learning languages, they always move through a particular series of, of levels of uh, skill. And uh, this is very helpful. When I have people joining our classes, I ask them to take a look at a chart on our website, which I'm going to be referring to. You'll see my eyes looking over uh, on other parts of the, my computer screen here as I uh, look at some of the descriptions. But I, I ask students to take a look and see what describes them the best. Uh, with, a, with a chart like the one that's on my website, you're able to uh, figure out exactly what level you're at. It also helps you figure out what you need to do or what you need to be able to do in order to speak at a new proficiency level. So if you're a beginner in, in Polish, uh, what would it look like if you were an intermediate speaker of Polish? And what should you be doing in order to reach that next level? It hardly matters what you study or what kind of a program you use. You will progress in the same order of uh, development. So let's take a look at a few of these. And uh, again, as I said, I'm referring to uh, something else on my screen. Uh, first, let me talk about uh, the very first level of proficiency. And this is describing something between absolute beginners and uh, a novice, or there's various levels of novice. But an absolute beginner is a person who uh, doesn't really have any ability at all in their target language. And that's fine. That's the starting point for everyone at some point, including uh, in English. That's where you're at. Um, uh, but a person uh, who studies a new language will soon move to a novice level of proficiency and a high novice level speaker of a new language can use maybe 50 or 100 words in their new language. Uh, they're able to uh, do some really basic things. They're able to survive in the most predictable situations by using uh, rehearsed uh, uh, words and phrases. Uh, there can't be any surprises for a novice and if there are any surprises they're quickly lost. It doesn't take very long to move from the novice level to the intermediate level. And an, an, an intermediate student of a new language looks very different from a novice. An intermediate student can uh, start a conversation and end one, uh, can order food from a menu, can tell time and the days of the week and the dates. Uh, an intermediate student is able to make purchases in their target language, uh, maybe get directions on foot or in a vehicle. Uh, can introduce themselves and get some personal information about the person they're speaking with. And uh, they are able to uh, distinguish between formal and informal address. If you're speaking Spanish or French or Portuguese or something, you'll know there's a difference between the way that you speak to somebody that you know well and somebody you don't. Uh, they're able to maintain a very simple face-to-face -face conversations uh, with uh, lots of mistakes, that's fine, but now they're beginning to function in this language. Uh, that is an intermediate student. Um, yeah, but again, they're looking at uh, predictable uses of the language. What you'll find is that the time that it takes you to move from a novice to an intermediate is doubled when you go from intermediate to advanced. And when you move from advanced to advanced plus or to superior or to distinguished levels of proficiency, each level takes twice as long or more than the previous level. So that's helpful. So, you know, sometimes you'll say, I feel like I'm at a plateau in my in my target language. That's completely normal. It just takes longer to get to the next level of proficiency. And keep going, you're going to do fine. Uh, it's impossible to uh, keep working on your languages and not become bilingual if, uh, if you're just following a few basic rules. And that's another video to come up. Uh, let's talk about advanced levels of proficiency. An, av an advanced student, this is not a perfect speaker of the language. And sometimes when people are calling me about uh, advanced Spanish classes or French classes, they'll say, boy, I don't know if I'm advanced because they're freaked out by the term uh, advanced. Advanced doesn't mean perfect. Advanced means someone who uh, has a pretty good idea of how the language works. 
uh, if you're an advanced student, you've probably worked through some kind of a textbook, and you know the basic structures of your language. Does it have genders, like masculine and feminine? Um, how do the verbs work? Uh, what's roughly the word order? Uh, is Are there any weird sounds in this language? you got to picture. It doesn't mean that you've mastered everything, or, or even that all the things that you studied and maybe tried to memorize, that you can use them perfectly. Uh, that's, a, that's a different thing. Uh, but advanced means you've got a handle on it. Your, your pronunciation is always intelligible. It's not perfect. You might be easily recognized as a native speaker of, of something else. Uh, it means that you could uh, exchange a basic message over the phone. Uh, generally speaking, you can understand maybe 80% of what's going on in a simple conversation, and the people who are speaking with you can understand 80% of what you're saying, but there's still mistakes and there's still uh, difficulties, there's still challenges. Um, the, uh, the communication works when you're at advanced level. So when you're an, an, at an intermediate level, you can survive. This is what we mean when we say things like, I can get by in, uh, I can get by in Greek. Uh, it, it means I can survive. I could handle basic situations. I can combine the words and phrases that I've learned before. Uh, to get my way around, and it's far from perfect, and sometimes it's really confusing. That's intermediate. Advanced means I can have a conversation, and uh, I might not pass myself off as a native speaker. In fact, I can't quite at that level, uh, but uh, I don't need a predictable situation. If I run into somebody who speaks my target language, we can talk for, for a half an hour, uh, in connected discourse, meaning sentence after sentence without large pauses and hesitation. And sure, you stop and you look for a word and you mix up your word order and you say some things that aren't quite right and maybe make an embarrassing mistake. That's still an advanced level. But getting beyond an advanced level means that uh, you're able to uh, perhaps work in your target language, that uh, you don't avoid certain features of the language. I know when I was learning Spanish, one of the things that I did uh, early on is I would talk in the present tense all the time. I'd just say everything was as if it's happening now, and then I'd add in some words like, yesterday I'm going downtown. Two years ago I'm talking with my friend and I'm doing this and that. Uh, so I was avoiding certain structures, and uh, I know that a lot of my advanced students in Spanish will avoid the subjunctive because it's so different from English. When you get to a superior level in your target language, then you don't avoid uh, certain grammatical features. Uh, another thing that differs between advanced and superior, uh, sometimes even when you're an advanced level in a language, and I know that this has happened to me, you start a sentence and you get halfway through it and you think, oh no, I can't finish this sentence. I don't, no matter what I do, I don't know how I'm going to find a way around this. Uh, at a superior level, uh, you can finish any sentence you start. Sometimes at an advanced level, you can't finish it in any way that you thought of, and you have to step back and say, okay, how will I say this in some other way? Can I paraphrase this? Can I uh, find some other way around? Can I draw a picture on a napkin to get the job done? That's called circumlocution, uh, talking my way around what I was trying to say directly. But a superior student can complete any sentence. They can participate in a conversation between native speakers. Sometimes when we're speaking with native speakers, they adjust the way that they talk because they recognize that we're not really uh, all the way there yet. And they'll, they'll slow it down a little bit and keep their word choices a little bit simple uh, or simpler. Um, but when you are at a superior level, the people you're talking with don't adjust their language at all. Some people who speak, another, uh, speak your target language don't know how to talk to foreigners. And that makes it really difficult for you if you're at an intermediate level and sometimes even if you're at an advanced level. But at a superior level, you might not catch everything, but you're okay talking with native speakers uh, in the way that they usually talk. You're able to understand information over the phone. Uh, you're able to take notes when you're listening to somebody talk in the language. Uh, you're able to uh, communicate clearly with a group of people, uh, even on, on professional subjects or some technical subjects other than just sort of the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, you're able to get through uh, common blunders and mistakes. That's super helpful. Uh, learning how to uh, how to handle the problem if you can't finish a sentence or uh, if you uh, don't know how to say something and, and you've really blown it, knowing how to handle that. Uh, a superior student is able to understand uh, conversations between native speakers and can serve as an interpreter for people who don't speak that target language. Again, it might not be quite perfect, but at a superior level, 
your knowledge of the two languages of your of your native language and your target language is good enough that you can handle exchanges for other people and you're able to carry out job responsibilities you could actually work in your target language there's uh, another level yet which is the distinguished level of language proficiency this is a person who practically never makes uh, mistakes in the target language is always understood by native speakers when uh, when they're talking with them uh, a distinguished speaker is able to understand jokes and puns uh, that's a tricky thing when you can when you can understand jokes and puns spontaneously without preparation without reading them in advance or something and somebody's making a joke or uh, you know wordplay and you can follow it uh, a distinguished person is able to convey exact meanings uh, on various subjects including professional things and talking about feelings and opinions and that sort of that sort of thing. It's one thing to be able to explain anything that happens in your life in, in tangible physical objects, but when you start talking about your, your feelings and emotions and your opinions about uh, about politics or uh, the way your business should run, that's a, that's a higher level yet. That's more what we would call distinguished proficiency. Um, there is a significant understanding of target language culture and that's one thing that is really important to your language your development in proficiency in your target language um, the a, a distinguished speaker is also able to adjust their speech to accommodate whatever situation they're in so for example if you are involved in explaining a legal position before a judge you talk differently than the way that you talk with your buddies when you're having a coffee in the coffee shop uh, there is a different register uh, register is a reference to uh, a level of formality. Um, a distinguished speaker recognizes that and adjusts. A native level speaker is, uh, this is the the holy grail of language students and we all hope to get there. The real truth is that as adults most of us will not become native level proficient in a foreign language. Although some of us get pretty close uh, depending on how early we started and, and our motivation level and the amount of time that we put in into it and and of course you take if you take my classes you have a better chance than whatever else you're doing uh, but native level proficiency means that uh, you are treated like a native by outside speakers you're in a conversation and you're one of the gang uh, they don't uh, adjust things to treat you as a foreigner um, you feel more or less at home in your target language as you do in English and sometimes you feel like you're at home more when you're speaking your second language than your first language. It's, you're really an insider at this point. Another test, this is a tricky one, if you can do mental math in your target language, if you can sit there and do calculations in your head in your target language, wow, you've really accomplished something because that is not a simple task and most language students can't do that. When you are a native speaker, that's when you would say that you are completely bilingual and bicultural. bicultural. Uh, you function in this language just like your own language. In real life, for most of us as language students, we're somewhere else on the proficiency scale other than native level. If you grew up with two languages, if you're uh, the the child of a missionary, or if you're the you know if you were a diplomat's kid in another country and grew up with a couple of languages, then it's very possible that you might be uh, very very native like in in two or more languages. But if you're a person like me who grew up in a uh, a monolingual home and uh, you know spoke only English in your in your home and then started to pick up languages especially as an adult as, as I did uh, then you're probably somewhere else on the proficiency scale and of course your proficiency in various languages will be different in some languages you'll have a high diff high, a high level of proficiency and in other languages it'll be lower but it's very helpful for describing your your language skill and when you're talking with somebody else and they tell you uh, that they speak another language fluently, you don't know what that means. So using a proficiency scale is very helpful. And I'll, I'll, at the bottom of the screen, I'll put a reference to the chart on my website that describes proficiency levels. I hope this was helpful for you, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks. Bye-bye.